I'm delivering this letter on behalf of Randy Kohler of the same address who, who regrettably could not be here due to a U.S. Dairy Export Council meeting. As I stated last September, it is not the most comfortable thing speaking against a neighboring dairy farmer. Unfortunately, I still find it the necessary thing to do. The updated 590 nutrient management plan still contains serious inaccuracies. There are parcels listed on the 590 assessment plan. They're not all owned by the person stated, and the acreage on the rental contract doesn't match the 590 plan. <coughs> A landowner statement submitted in October has been altered not just once, but twice, likely fraudulently when an adjoining landowner's property identification was added to the original document. Finally, 415.4 acres of land that was discredited from the original NMP last September has recently been added it back in through some agreement with the renters. However, the McMahon family that owns the land did not provide, nor were they asked for the required landowner's signature. A letter will be submitted saying no manure can be applied to the parcel referred to as Procnow 01. Additional parcel and documentation is provided to Leah. Uh, with violations that have occurred in the past and violations uncovered in the on-farm visit by the DNR last summer, the dairy should certainly know that their every move is being scrutinized. Still new documented farm violations and inaccurate, likely fraudulent documents have been su submitted in the past six months. I find it unfathomable that the, if the DNR was to move forward with the issuance of a capo expansion permit for Cranberry Creek Dairy, given the deceptive, at best, information that has been submitted once again, issuance of this permit would be a detriment to, all to the future of all farms that do follow regulations set forth, whether a capo or a small farm. Thank you. that are coming here today, so hold your applause to the end, but I'm, I'm just going to request that. Um, next up, uh, we have Harry Warden, and on deck is Charles Harshlet. I'm Harry Warden. I am the town chair of uh, the town of Rock Creek, and on the date of September 15, 2016, the Town Board of Rock Creek um, passed and adopted a resolution uh, in opposition to the expansion of Cranberry Creek Farm, which relates to this um, um, revised in our uh, proposal. And I will submit that as, as my evidence. Town board is still opposed without, at the very least, um, adequate monitoring of, this, of the disposal and storage so, Good for you. All right. David, uh, I believe it's Dan. that are in the town of Springbrook, Dunn County. Average mileage from Cranberry Creek is farm is 10 and a half miles. East of Highway 37 to Highway 53, there is 584 acres in the plan with an average of 15 miles from Cranberry Creek, the longest distance being 20 miles from the dairy. Hauling on these two highways through the village of Rock Falls is a safety issue with many trucks in and out of the fields on already heavily traveled highways. On the ec economics of hauling manure long distances, one CAFO owner gave an example of spreading 2,000 gallons of manure per acre on 85 acres at a distance of 10 miles round trip with the cost of $40,000.
at these high costs, my question is, is the manure going to get to these fields that far from the dairy? Cranberry Creek is close to the Chippewa River to the north and west, and I'm concerned there will be oversaturation and contamination of the land and river, creeks and drinking water in this area. Uh, we already have two CAFOs from the Pepin County area, which is a couple miles, a mile and a half south of Cranberry Creek is the county line. We, ought, we have two of them spreading in our area right now. A satellite farm housing Cranberry Creek heifers spread manure on land designated for Cranberry Creek Dairy 590 plant. And another question is, a lot of the contracts are one-year contracts. No. And uh, it's, it's just not feasible. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, David Sen, and then we have Rachel Humer uh, on deck. My name is David Stanton. Uh, my address is 174 uh, We don't need more milk. Uh, this is an extraordinary event. Uh, the decision you make uh, in this case could uh, change the course of the history of the state of Wisconsin. This could be the point of no return where family farms in our state are given the shabbiest possible treatment. I'm a disabled combat veteran. I'm reminded of the way I was treated when I came back from the war. I thought I had done the right thing, but, it was, but I was treated as if I had personally burned the hamlet of Mili to the ground and personally handed the U.S. Embassy over to the Viet Cong. Now you're doing the same thing to my neighbors and farm families, the Renhounds, the Coomers, the Wounds, the Stutzens, the Easterbelts, the Harslips. It's happening all over again. You're treating these decent, honest members of our Rock Falls community like they did something wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. But they will be the first ones to pay the price for folly and won't end with them. It's going to slam the, slam the head on into the lives of the Dolls, the Wagners, and the Yoders. It won't end until everyone is driven from the, from the land by the sheer weight of the bottled water they'll be required to buy, the nitrates in the wells, and the devastated landscape. This area will turn into a, a, a rural slum. Approval of this application will reach far beyond the damaged and hopeless lives it creates. <coughs> when it seeps into the bloodstream and turtles in the nervous system of future generations, Charles Dickens could have written a story. We don't need more milk. America is drowning in a sea of milk. Wall Street Journal reports that farmers processes for forced to dump 43, 43 million gallons of milk because of market damaging surplus. The low cost, low price creates a vacuum in dairy industry that will encourage import markets. Then watch and see what happens to the factory farms. Take a look around. Do you really think America needs more butter? I think the reports can't happen here. Henry Ford, Walter Chrysler, Lee I. Cook would argue with you. My grandmother was a chambermaid at the Tyrone Hotel, and my grandfather worked at Dan Andrews at the Rock Falls Mill. Her people were driven out of Ireland by a famine. Bonnie's grandparents and great grandparents were immigrants who didn't speak American. They were driven out of Norway by a repressive religion, and now I feel like we're being crowded out by a fleet of shit trucks chimney irrigators, and butter makers. We don't need more milk. I know, I'm, I don't know who's going to be working on this expansion project. From the sound of things coming out of Washington, the current employees will either, will either get out of town or will be hauled out of town. Who will do the work? It's just a matter of time. That's no way to treat your neighbors. It's no way to treat the neighbors well. We don't need milk. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Rachel Coomer, Coomer and uh, Rusty Coomer on deck. My name is Rachel Coomer. I reside at N1411, 830th Street, Mondovi. 
I am a dairy farmer located approximately a mile from Cranberry Creek Dairy. Upon review of all the current materials that have been turned in with the application, I'm still not impressed. Uh, we find there's still missing landowner agreements or rental contracts. Some of these agreements I can match up because I'm living here all my life. Some of them I can find by the field verification number on top of the agreement, and some are not possible to match. Landowners have signed blank agreements, with no specific field tied to the document. This appears to be a deceptive tactic that makes it impossible to verify what land has been signed for and what has not. How can the DNR know that every field has been agreed upon if they cannot match each field to an agreement? There are also certain fields that have agreements that are signed by someone other than the landowner. In some instances, the agreements have been signed by tenants of the land. While it is unclear whether this is even allowed, since your document clearly states landowner signature on it, at least some of the tenants have made notes on the agreements that they were indeed tenants. On others, the DNR would never know because the tenant has signed as a landowner. This plan even has contracts included for lands that were removed from the plan altogether. Why these have been included is unclear. These are for acreage that has never been operated by Cranberry Creek, and people gave testimony last fall indicating that Cranberry Creek would never have access to this land. And yet, a copy of the contract is included, some looking as if they have been altered. Another issue with this plan is whether this application is even complete. According to NR 151, the fields in the maps need to match the fields in the 590. We have examples of fields that are on maps, but not in the 590, or are in the 590 and not on the maps. There are also lands that Cranberry Creek will be operating, but the landowner has specifically requested not to have their manure applied to their fields. These lands are removed from the 590, but they're still in the maps. All fields should be in the 590 because they will be getting nutrients through a commercial fertilizers if they're not getting manure. The most recent 590 assessment is dated 125, but the most recent spread report is dated 1014. When going through my spread plan, the lands that are reported this fall as not allowing manure are still there and still showing that they will receive manure. Now I know you argue that they've been taken out, it goes back into the pool, we add more fields, they get spread out somewhere else, but without a complete plan, there is no way for us to verify that all the manure has been fully accounted for in appropriate places, not allowing us the opportunity to review this plan properly. These inaccuracies and others that my fellow neighbors have brought up and will continue to bring up point to an incomplete application that the DNR should not even consider approving. I will be sending in a more detailed statement that itemizes my concerns and includes my supporting evidence. Woo! Yeah. All right, we have Rusty Coomer, Coomer followed by uh, Jennifer Dahu? Dahl. Dahl, sorry. All right, Rusty Coomer, N1411830 Street, Mondovi. Looking at the plan, we've discovered also that there's different crop rotations than what we know are currently on fields and what will be on fields. A lot of the fields are listed that have corn silage on them, which we all know removes the most nutrients. But in talking with one landowner who's got several hundred acres in here, his land will be in soybeans this year. So there's a quite an inept difference in where some manure will be going. You know, we just keep looking through, we keep finding more things wrong. You know, like the land that's removed that's in there yet, the different things. I feel like if we can't manage what we have now, why go bigger? And let's do a better job of what we got. We got open silage bags that blew open that were just left. So every time it rains or whatever, that's just leaching into the soil. We're supposed to be catching our leachate. And we got all these bags just placed willy-nilly as if we don't care. So I guess that's my statement. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Jennifer Dahl, founded by Kim Dupre. Thank you for having me. I'm Jennifer Dahl, E7274, 160th Avenue, Mondovi, Wisconsin. But more importantly, I live in Mary Dean. Um, 
My home is less than 20 acres from Cranberry Creek, and I live in a floodplain right next to the Chippewa River. I would like to submit into record what I just did. It's a copy of the report titled Nitrate in Drinking Water, a Public Health Concern for All Iowans. There are thousands of studies that show the detrimental effects of nitrates. However, I chose this report for several reasons. The size of the cohort used in the study, the timeliness of the report, it's in 2016, the length of the study, the extensive assurance for the referenced and the peer-reviewed and published research. I wrote a date, so I wouldn't have to use my glasses. The report focuses on three negative health effects. Besides the blue baby syndrome. These studies show the mostly associated with nitrates, birth defects, bladder, and thyroid cancer, leaving the other serious health concerns for the further study and complications. Just birth defects. This study includes the neutral tube defects that the brain and spinal cord are positively associated in the prenatal nitrate in the months in the mother's drinking water. A Canadian study shows these defects at nitrate levels as low as 3.5 parts per million. The other study shows three times the rate of birth defects in 5 to 15 parts per million and four times the rate in 15 parts per million or greater. That's good. Bladder cancer. In 2001, a study of 22,000 Iowan women who consistently use their water supply for 10 years or more with an average nitrate level of just 2.46 parts per million showed these women were three times as likely to develop bladder cancer compared to those women drinking water with levels in the lowest nitrate levels. A 2016 study of 35,000 women who had been followed for 25 years showed an increase in bladder cancer with exposure to nitrate out five um, parts per million or greater for as little as four years. Studies in Spain, Germany, and Taiwan have confirmed similar findings. Thyroid cancer. In 2001, the Iowan study also revealed that consumption of water exceeding five parts per million led to the increased thyroid cancer rates. Thyroid cancer has tripled in the United States in the past three decades. Why am I going on and on about cancer and the information in the study and the level of nitrates of what the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has created a water standard of 10 parts per million? Um, and it was established in 1962. Okay. Well, drinking water in the area of this proposed CAFO is currently sitting on the land on this map. I'm going to get up and I'm going to show you right here where it's red and yellow, it is very susceptible to nitrate. Um, next up we have um, Kim Gray, followed by Glory Adams. Thank you. Kim Dupree, 230 Lake County Road G in Emerald, Wisconsin. I'm here from St. Craig County and I've come to share Emerald's story with you today. Um, I've always been told that the one thing we never seem to learn from history is to learn from history. And 15 years ago, when Emerald Dairy was established with a thousand cows, an environmental impact study was done at the time. And I quote from that environmental impact study now. If the operation conducts land spreading, in accordance with an approved man manure management plan, maintains an adequate land base, base for land spreading, and properly inspects and maintains manure storage facilities and run runoff control systems, the threat to groundwater and surface water should be minimal under normal operating climatic conditions. That's what we were told 15 years ago. That's not what we have right now in Emerald. The Emerald Town Hall sits right across the road from Emerald Sky Dairy. And when it was built in 2007, it had a water test done. The nitrates were at 6.9. We had another water test done just in January. The nitrates were at 26.8. Another test done in February, the nitrates were at 19.1. This all in 10 years amount of time. 
obviously that's way above the health standards. We can now have the town hall posted that you cannot drink the water. And as I started inquiring, we realized the Forest Town Hall, just to the north of us, cannot drink their water because of E. coli in their well. The Stanton Town Hall, just another township over, has excessive nitrates and has it posted there as well. Warren Township, down by Roberts, Wisconsin, has had groundwater nitrate problems for years and was on the groundwater committee for eight years in the early 2000s. My neighbors that now live within a mile of me never used to have high nitrates in their well, now do. And they've been tracking their well water for a number of years. I guess in my opinion, before we expand any of these large dairies, we need to reevaluate our practices because obviously what is being done is not working for us in that moment. And we need to be sure that we maintain our rural way of life for those, our children, our grandchildren. And like I tell people, I love the cream of my coffee every morning, but I need clean drinking water to make that coffee in the first place. I don't want to go back to living like my great grandmother did and have to pull water in from the outside in order to maintain my world way of life. So I just wanted to share with you our experiences in Emerald and wish you would consider what happened there before we go forward anywhere else. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Gloria Adams and I'm at the Mo Clinic, 1216 South Farwell. I have what are mostly questions that are concerns about the expansion and the lands for cranberry maple. First, it appears to me that these, some of these fields are close to small creeks that eventually go into the Chippewa River. That speaks to the ine inevitable runoff of manure liquids, which will carry pollutants and probably some pathogens right down the pipe to the river. When these additional fields were <coughs> tested, were they tested for the amount of phosphorus and nitrate they already have in the soil? Wisconsin soils tend to be, have an overabundance of phosphorus and nitrate already, so it would stand to reason that adding more manure on top of what's already in the soil would be counterproductive. Our wetlands are really well delineated so that those spreading will know where they are and avoid them. That also speaks to the monitoring by the factory farm owner. Is he able to do that? How frequently, then, is the DNR going to check on these fields to ascertain that they are not being spread too frequently or in too great a quantity? That needs to be done because Cranberry Creek is basically in charge of monitoring itself. Then I'd want to know, are any other farms spreading on the same fields that Cranberry Creek plans to spread? Then have private wells in that area been tested? That needs to be done so there's a baseline established and then tested later to ascertain whether or not the nitrates in those wells have increased. And speaking to the roads, I really hope that the town government here, for any of the town roads involved, in some manner make Cranberry Creek or grassland, whatever it becomes, makes them responsible for the wear and tear of heavy manure spreading equipment going on various town roads. Town roads are usually not built to handle these huge, heavy appliances, if you will. Homes in close proximity to the intensive manure spreading do tend to lose some value. And I would hope that Cranberry Creek Dairy will do something to support these neighbors rather than expecting them just to lose value and accept it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have Greg Leonard. And on deck we have either Sue and, and Dick Dahl, or one of those two, or both. Good morning. I'm Greg Leonard. I'm with Oak Park County Land Conservation. Our address is 721 Oxford Avenue in Oak Park, Wisconsin, 54703. Today's hearing is in relation to new fields contained within the modified nature management plan. 
As you'll see in my comments, we'll include data that reflects the total proposed acres within Oak Park County. Both previously submitted new field, previously submitted and new fields for a reason. The modified nutrient management plan is submitted to our office as a courtesy includes 1,961 acres within Oak Park County which includes over 1,200 acres as new land within the modified plan. <coughs> this represents one of the larger farm operations spreading manure within Oak Park County that is not physically located within the county. Of the total 1,961 acres proposed, 49% or approximately 954 acres are fields which contain soils which are less than 24 inches to bedrock or groundwater. This is a significant percentage. I understand these fields will need to be field verified prior to application manure. This has not yet occurred, and this is an acceptable uh, operation for submittal of nutrient management plans across the state. In essence, some of the acres may become ineligible for inclusion in the nutrient management plan. I have not run this analysis on land outside of Eau Claire County contained within the modified plan. If there are additional fields and acreage that cannot receive manure applications, my concern as the Eau Claire County Land Conservation Manager is that there may be an approved permit issue in which a nutrient management plan becomes very difficult, if not impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! All right. Um, Sue and or Nick Dahl. We decline. There's far better statements than ours. Okay. Okay. Um, we have Darren Petucci, followed by uh, Libby uh, Stupak. My name is Darren Wintucky. I live at N3, N4395, uh, but I'm Wisconsin 54751, Town of Spring Brook, which actually is listed in the application. I'm here to speak in opposition uh, to the modification of the nutrient management plan and expansion of Cranberry Creek Dairy. Um, I believe that uh, the questionable modified plan, the misleading nature of the previous application, the suspect operational track record of the dairy, and the self regulated nature of the industry, uh, afforded to the industry, please uh, reasonable citizen to conclude there are serious concerns and questions regarding ground and soft surface water contamination and pollution. I find it kind of ironic that the uh, title is of substantial modification because uh, I believe the uh, citizens of this area have not been given substantial information or assurances by the dairy or the agency. Therefore, I find it entirely reasonable and democratic for citizens to ask the agency for, uh, for a comprehensive uh, environmental impact study or outright deny it. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Uh, Libby, excuse me. I'll submit my written comment. Are you Libby? Yes. Thank you. Um, Eleanor Wolf, followed by Lenore Mercer. Eleanor Wolf. I'm here in, uh, oh, I should say my name yep. and my address. Uh, Eleanor Wolf, and uh, I live at 1810 Birch Street in Eau Claire. And uh, I used to farm, and uh, we had 60 cows uh, that we milked. Times have changed, and the problem here is not uh, farming per se. The problem here with, with these huge CAFOs is the risk involved. And I don't think uh, a community can, uh, or a uh, county or a, a municipality can take on that risk anymore. Uh, sure, there's good management plans. Nobody's um, nobody's. Uh, checking on them. Nobody's making sure that they aren't spreading too much. And uh, then there's the, uh, the catastrophes that occur. Uh, when we have 10 inches of rainfall, uh, what's happening to that uh, manure that's just been spread on that field? The other thing is, uh, uh, I happen to know, my nephew has a big uh, farm in Southern, dairy farm in Southern Wisconsin. They run pipes from the farm. I don't know, there's some kind of plastic uh, uh, hose, hosing or pipes to take the liquid manure out to the fields. Oh, well, once in a while they break and the manure runs down the uh, side of the road. And of course it goes, ends up in the creeks and uh, 
and con contaminates the creeks. So uh, there's a whole lot of uh, dangers involved in a, in a, a capo that's this size with 7,000 uh, 7, um, 7, or more animals. And all the good management plans and all the stuff that's on the books uh, is not going to keep the pollutants out of the water and out of our uh, groundwater, our streams. I would ask that uh, you either uh, deny this uh, permit because of the, uh, the uh, faults in the submission, the inaccurate acreage, and the other problems with those, those acres. I would ask that you deny it, uh, or uh, if, you, if you're not willing to do that, then uh, we ask for an environmental impacts uh, study, which um, will look into all of these issues in depth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Lenore Mercer, followed by Tom Quinn. My name is Lamar Mercer. I live at 2015 Shore Haven, Wyoming, in Wisconsin. I'm here today to speak to you through the prism of an RN. I grew up on a dairy farm in Dunn County and went through the 4-H program. I've had courses in bacteriology, microbiology, pathophysiology, and public health. With this training, I oppose the unparalleled expansion of Cranberry Creek. But we have to look at the facts today. The fact is that there is a link between excessive CAFO excrement and nitrate contaminated well water. Birth defects and human health hazards linked to nitrate ingestion is a known fact. In Kiwani County, the link between CAFOs and nitrate contaminated water is a known fact. One third of the wells in, uh, near Cafos in uh, Kiwani County are nitrate contaminated. This is a known fact. Future generations have no voice. Will they say thank you for protecting their groundwater? Or will they rue the day when their water was contaminated by more expansion, ex more Cafo expansion? You are their voice. Will you risk their future? and there is risk involved. Jody Perrins of Kiwani County wrote in the newspaper, don't be another Kiwani County. Say no to the capable expansion while there is time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have followed by Adam uh, Vesterveld. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm Tom Quinn, uh, 100 West Tainer, Downing, Wisconsin. I'm speaking informally and personally today. I am a member of the Dunn County Board, Chair of the Planning and Resource Committee, also Executive Director of the Wisconsin Farmers Union, but speaking mostly as a, personally as a County Board member. Uh, Largely in result to the last the comments made at the last hearing down here, and then at further hearings we had at the county board, we established a six-month moratorium on CAFO expansions in Dunn County, and more importantly, established a livestock study committee that was included a diverse representation of population to study this issue and to try and frame some kind of uh, understanding of what our options might be. Uh, that committee's work will be done in May, and the moratorium will be up by then. Uh, we have not had an opportunity to directly review the management plan that's been re recently submitted. We will do so, and we will have, probably have some comments to you by the deadline. Uh, but I'd like to share some concerns that I think reflect the discussions that the committee has had. Uh, and some of them brought up already, but they, uh, they really, I think, rest a lot on the, the quality and the confidence of the nutrient management plan. We have, as I said, we've not gotten a, a completed plan from uh, Cranberry Creek, but we requested one. Uh, we got a response back, interestingly, interestingly from uh, 
Grassland area, but not from Cranberry Creek. But we're concerned that, uh, that again, that a plan could be reviewed, can be approved, that we th that, that wouldn't meet the needs that the county has determined are important with regard to its, its environment, its economy. Uh, in particular, I think we would be concerned about the scope of the spreading that's discussed by several people this morning, the distances that are required, the impacts, potential impacts on roads, uh, possibly for spills, and probably also the, since it's so much manure, the, the long-term security of the contracts that are in place and what can happen uh, in the interim. We've been looking at those issues. We haven't, re haven't resolved them, but I'm sure they were part of our discussion. Another issue that I, and I know it's not directly part of the DNR's purview, is the whole question of groundwater. We, we did study these maps that were presented earlier at one of our committee meetings, heard a report. Uh, we are very concerned about the health impacts of, of, of groundwater and uh, urge the, the department to do whatever it can to address those concerns when it thinks about the management of this of this farm. I think the, the other issue would be, another issue would be just the scale of operation. Our committee includes several CAFO operators, a number of other farmers. I'll wrap it up, okay. Uh, I think there's just concern that uh, we can handle in Dunn County, we can handle modest expansion. We can manage that. We as a community can deal with it. This farm goes beyond that. And it's this scale that is the concern. The last thing I think is just uh, we are we understand that the DNR has, has limitations, but also that you have a lot of flexibility. The statutes provide you with a lot of flexibility to go above and beyond the minimum standards. And whatever our committee decides on the whole issue, uh, we urge you to do that. It's your responsibility. Thank you. Just so people know, I, I think what I'll do when there's like a minute left, I'll just, you know, hold my finger and let you know if there's a minute left. Um, let's see, we have you, Adam? Yep. Did I do okay in your last You year? did pretty good. All right. Well, <laughs> most and then we have Chris Keys Winkler well, uh, up next. You ready for me? I'm ready for you. Name and address. Adam Biestervelt, E8702 50th Avenue, Mondovi, Wisconsin. Um, I'm a dairy farmer from this area. I live about a mile from Cranberry Creek. I've been neighbors with Jeremy my whole life. I was a patron of Grassland Dairy Products for about 15 years. And my thoughts of that whole thing in the last two years for what that company has become, Jeremy's made a deal with the devil. Um, there's more than enough wrong with the added fields, with stuff being wrong. I'm gonna submit some comments to you guys. It needs to be looked at probably send them back to the drawing board to start over because it ain't right. So I'm opposed to it. Thank you and have a good day. <laughs> All right, next up we have uh, Chris Keys Winkler followed by Stephanie Dreyer. First, thanks for the opportunity to have this second hearing. My concern is why are we here? You were given the testimony, you were given the data at the first hearing. How many chances will Grassland Dairy and Cranberry Creek get to get it right? They've ha they have one time. They falsified their application beyond belief. The small farmers here who are sustainable and follow their nutrient management plans we operate on trust and honesty and truth. That is not how Cranberry Creek and Grassland Dairy operates. The DNR has not responded to our initial complaints in September. How long, how long will this application process go on? <coughs> You've heard the data, the nitrates, the health concerns, You've heard from professionals from September. You've heard from professionals today. You have the tools in your toolbox to deny this. Please use them. Next up, we have um, Stephanie Dreyer, followed by Jane Peterson. Stephanie 
Stephanie Dreyer, 7220 North Pearl Street, River Falls, Wisconsin. So just as a lay person, I have no experience in reviewing um, N90 plans, 590 plans and NMPs, but just in looking at the application, it appears that there will be substantial um, impacts to the area, and it will go to our nearby waters and our groundwater. Their plan is in place to loan 56 million gallons of manure on these fields, and the application itself states right at the bottom that they have not verified the depth to bedrock or the presence of the groundwater levels. When do we plan to look for the presence of these? We have a farm that is already in significant non-compliance with how they currently operate under their current permit with the number of cows they have. When are we going to look for this? Are we going to require it of them to put it in their application and let us know when the depth of groundwater, what the depth of groundwater is? Or are we going to wait to be another Kiwani County until the neighbor opens the faucet and out comes liquid manure? Are we going to wait until then? No, I sure hope not. The DMR does have the authority to deny these permits and these applications or make significant modifications or restrictions on the permit. I please, I hope that they do. Because just in looking at the, the simple information, you can tell the permit has not, the permit holder has not even done soil samples from 2016. They still show up on the snap chart as not identified or attested for nutrients. How much more can we load on this land? As the guy from Eau Claire County stated, all of these lands are restricted or they're in little five acre clumps. The instruments aren't calibrated, we, we know that. I can't get any records from the DNR on the annual reports on what spread, spreading occurs and where it's occurring. There is significant evidence that the spreaders don't get the maps needed and where to apply what setbacks need to be followed in the SWQMAs. How are we going to know? They state that they're going to do pictures before and after. Who's going to collect that data? Who's going to have that record? We need that. We need that as citizens. Everyone here is drinking nitrate water currently. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow more to be added. We cannot have 10,000 gallons per acre of manure added to our lands. As the study pointed out, these particular lands are not suitable. They're susceptible. They're already vulnerable. They already have high nitrates. Some in the area are 24 parts per million. We need to do better. We can do better. We don't even click all the boxes on the nutrient management checklist that you use to review applications. Leah, you are the boots on the ground. You've seen that report. You know that they have not put structures, infrastructure, or practices in place to clean up what they already currently have going on. You can take it to your enforcement forum. You can start the process down the road to enact Chapter 283 to uphold the WPDS permit. Thank you. Thank you Next up, we have Jane Peterson, followed by Rita Bauer. I'm Jane Peterson, and I think I checked the wrong box. I can't remember this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. You bet. Um, I, I, Rita Banky or Bauer, um, 20, uh, 250 South Washington. Just a quick point, um, Rita Bronco, 2250 South Washington, Monrovia Street. It's well documented that the DNR has less staff, less of a priority, less of a directive for enforcement. It seems to me um, you're going to have to rely on voluntary compliance. Um, the USDA is also looking at budget cuts and probably a new direction other than enforcement, just from reading the papers. Um, when, you have a, when you have somebody that submits a plan with inaccurate information, um, false information, um, the chances of voluntary compliance are slim. Uh, I walked by three officers on the way in here, I think it was three, that you know, we're, all, we're all compliant here because we know the consequences because they have a presence. And I don't see that there's going to be a presence to enforce, even if they come up with a very good plan 
who is going to who's going to be the presence who's going to enforce it. Amen. And I think people are afraid of that. And I understand that Wisconsin is supposed to be open for business now, and big business has responded. They're here, and people are afraid. And the state government, the DNR, probably the federal government, is not addressing that fear. And this is not going to get better unless, unless they do. That's all I have to say. Next up, we have uh, Jeff Smith, <coughs> followed by Dale Hirsch. Hi, I'm Jeff Smith. I'm with Citizen Action, uh, organizing cooperative Western Wisconsin, but I am a private citizen as well. I live in the town of Brunswick, um, which is neighboring township here. I'm only a few miles away from here, S7747 Norris Road. I have, we have delivered to you already a, uh, to your office, and, and I'm sure you know that. We have a signed receipt of a, uh, of a petition that we are asking for an environmental impact study. Um, it, but, but before I, or even before I say that, I, I want to make it clear that in my mind, and I think in the minds of most of these people here, there's 150 people here, and I think, I, and I've counted them, and I think there might be a handful of people who are in favor of this sort of expansion. So you've got 140 or more people who are here because they are afraid, as Rita has said. They have great concerns. And I want to believe and continue to have faith that our state and our DNR and our elected officials, which I have done one at one time, are here not just for the five people who want to, who want to uh, have sort of a business relationship with the government who want to make sure that what, what you do it makes their business grow and, and makes them profitable. I want to believe that you're also here for the 140 people who are here because they are not here about profit. They're here about their concerns for their environment, their safety, their children, and their future. So I, and I know that, that is a, you, not, is, you have a dual responsibility, but I do not want you to forget that responsibility as well. It is a huge responsibility on your shoulders. And you need not forget that. And I, uh, because I have to say that because I know as a fact that there, has, that, that there have not been any permits denied by the state of Wisconsin. It's time to start changing that, the way we operate. Hey. Yeah. So, as far as this petition for a, uh, for a uh, environmental impact statement, there are some legal opinions that it is it is actually something that must be done. Because the Radle Farm has two loans in the last two years through the Small Business Administration, each time for $350,000. And the law says the National Environment Policy Act of 42 was enacted to create a framework within the federal government for including environmental considerations among factors extraordinarily examined in a decision-making process. The heart of NEPA is the environmental impact statement, which must be prepared for all major federal actions. The definition of federal actions includes actions include new and continuing activities, including projects and programs entirely or partly financed, assisted, conducted, regulated, or approved by federal agencies, and that's what we have here. So not only do we believe we, that we want an environmental impact statement for ourselves, it is something that you must consider, we think, because of the um, relationship they have with their loans. Thank you. Thank you. You were Jeff, right? Yes. Thanks. Excuse me. I think everything has been pretty well set. What I wanted to say here, but I have a lot of people that call me and the bank rates are way high. Name and address, please. Oh. County Road Hole. My local Wisconsin. And everything has kind of been set what already, I guess, here. So that, um, people have been calling the night that's way, way over the line. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, 
And again, I apologize. I, I think it's Rita or it's um, Prospect Street, Durand, Wisconsin, 625 West. Prospect Street, yeah. Durand. That's okay. No, I apologize. A lot of people got my name wrong. All right. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought for a minute my uh, comment was not uh, relevant. Uh, oh, Pete Adler, 625 West Prospect Street, Durand, Wisconsin. Uh, I was county board chair for Pippin County for uh, 12 years. Uh, I was on the county board for 32 years. I thought for a minute that my comment wasn't relevant, uh, but the more I uh, heard uh, Jeff Smith speak, I think it is relevant. Our founding fathers, when I go back, I'm a history teacher. Uh, our founding fathers said that local government, government closest to the people, is the ones that ought to make decisions. In other words, the township, the county, the state. Well, I, I see a little bit of inner flux there. Uh, we don't have a lot of people running for town board because they don't really, nobody listens to them because the state overrules them. Well, there's not a lot of people anyway in Pippin County that are running for the county board because they don't have any power. The state has most of the power. So my suggestion to you people is that you have a tremendous responsibility because our founding fathers wouldn't have let you make this decision. Amen. Our founding fathers wouldn't have let the people in the township make the decision. And it seems to me if our founding fathers knew anything, these would be the people who are making the decision, not you. And the reason for that is, is if I live in a nice neighborhood, do I care much about the other neighborhood that isn't so nice? I'm not going to buy my house there. These are the people that live there. And you're making the decision for them. Isn't that something? I think that you ought to ask these people, which you have, about what decision you think they ought to make. Because that's what the Founding Fathers expected. They expected the lowest level of government to make the decisions. And I think that's a great responsibility on your part. You can go back to Madison or wherever you live and so forth and not worry about it. That's why the Founding Fathers said the people closest to the problem ought to make the decisions. Hopefully you can do that. Jenny Gruber. <coughs> Jenny Gruber, E9960, 110th Avenue, Mundovi, Wisconsin. I live two miles down this road. And the trucks have already gone by this spring. I, I have the same concerns you have heard from everybody here. I've given prepared statements. My views have not changed. This is an operation that has an extreme <coughs> risk in it, and we cannot afford to do this. The, the example, I have been to other briefings in Eau Claire, where there was a, a hearing from the top two regional people for the environment here. And what I learned that day about the central sands and the Wakani, Kiwani, and St. Croix, we have got this going on all over the state. At some point, we have to say no, no more of this. Until we do, people are going to continue to be greedy, not follow the trust, honesty, and friendship of making a community we all want to live in. It's terrible that we should have this strife going on. I just, I grew up here, I moved away for 26 years, came back. A lot of people have come and gone. I don't know many people, but this year has brought the community together. We are concerned. There is no reason to approve this application. How many times do they get a chance to perfect it? 
You take a test, you're done. Turn in an application, if it's not right, they're done. Cut the, end this. Please say no. Thank you. Woo! and those who have indicated a desire to speak. Um, I now would ask if there's anyone else who would like to make an oral statement. Um, please come forward and um, state your name. And well, I'm sorry, I'll get you next. You can do that. And I ask that you leave your sign uh, in the audience. So, did you, have you filled out a hands up already? I did. I had foregone speaking, but I'd like to wait a minute. Yes, no, that's fine. I just want to, I want you to state your name and address and we can pull it out of there. My name is Paul Miller. I live at 340 Lincoln Avenue in the city of Eau Claire. Um, one of the things that I recognize about this process is I think this is a foregone conclusion that this permit is going to be issued. And I think that every member of the DNR, in due diligence, goes against their grain and their conscience for this permit to be passed. This is a trend by Governor Walker, the Republican legislatures in the state, to allow big businesses based on donations to their campaigns and funding uh, their political offices. This is apparent in the sand mines. This is apparent in the iron mines of northern Wisconsin. And now it's apparent in the far, uh, industrial farming that's taking place in counties here. You may lose your job if you turn this permit down. And it's going to have to get to a point where you're either going to have to decide whether or not you want to continue a career with a clear conscience or do the due diligence that's expected in your uh, job and serving this community and turn this permit down. Hey, hey, hey. Is there anyone else? Anybody? Uh, can you please uh, come to the end and speak down and say your name? You certainly can. Okay. Thank you. Helen Keyes, W6754, Simpson Lane, Durand, Wisconsin. Wisconsin state law, particularly NR 140, groundwater quality, in conjunction with other federal and state laws, prohibits, prohibits the WDNR from issuing a pollution permit to a facility, practice, or activity where the enforcement standard established for a pollutant adopted under 14010 or 14012 has been reached or exceeded. In this case, the pollutant is nitrate, and the exceeded enforcement level is 10 parts per million. Keith Ferguson, Dunn County, Wisconsin Environmental Health Specialist, coordinated this soil susceptibility map from water tests, which I now submit as part of the record. As you can see, in the southeasterly corner of this map, which has just been presented into the record, the town of Rock Creek is on fire. Nitrate levels in excess of 10 to 20 parts per million blocked the town of Rock Creek. NR 14126-2A1 specifically orders the DNR to require responses to prevent any new releases of the substance from traveling beyond the design management zone and to restore contaminated groundwater within a reasonable period of time. Much of the proposed additional acreage is outside of the current design management zone, and to permit new releases in the area would be a flagrant violation of NR 140.126. Furthermore, NR 140.28 mandates, that means shall, it's a directive, that the DNR may not approve or propose facility practice or activity at a location where a PAL or enforcement level has been attained or exceeded <coughs> unless an exemption has been granted. Cranberry Creek does not qualify for an exemption. <coughs> Exemptions can only be granted if the existing or anticipated increase in the concentration of that substance does 